Hi, my name is Quinn. And tonight we're dealing with the subject of faith. And we're looking at the, the foundations of faith. Now, faith is a very vast subject. And there's so many different stories in the Bible about faith. There's so many different illustrations about faith. Um, but I think sometimes as Christians, we can kind of overlook it. Um, I know when um, I buy furniture, which I need to assemble, um, sometimes I, I look at the stuff in the box and I don't know where it, exactly where it fits. And so sometimes I overlook it and not really use it until right at the end when I look at the manual and realize, hey, this thing was actually quite vital. And I think that's how sometimes we treat faith. Uh, we know that it's part of our Christian walk, but we just don't know what part it is sometimes. We don't know how it fits in. We don't know, um, you know, we, we know that uh, it applies somewhere, but sometimes we just don't know uh, the foundations of it. And so tonight we're going to look at this vast subject, but we're going to break it down into three very simple um, categories. And the first one is what is faith? Um, and then the next one, we're going to look at faith and phases, which are the two phases of it. So faith in and faith for. Uh, so now when we look at what is faith, lucky uh, for us that the Bible is very uh, forthcoming about what is faith. And so we found this verse in Hebrews 11 verse 1, and it has this explanation for faith. Um, and it goes like this. It says, now faith is the assurance of things hoped for and the conviction of things not seen. Now, there, there are two things. If we really boil down that, that verse, there's two things there. Uh, there's things hoped for and things unseen. And you'll see that when you look at the stories in the Bible and you look at the examples of faith, that it really boils down to these two things, is that there's things hoped for and there's a conviction of things unseen. And unseen, I like to look at it this way, is that it's a reality waiting to be materialized. So when we're looking at that, uh, we're looking at, uh, when we're looking at the, the stories in the Bible, we're looking at it through these filters of um, hopeful and things unseen, reality waiting to be materialized. So let's look at faith in. So now that we know that what faith is, Right, let's look at what faith in is for. So faith in is the starting point of our salvation. And then we're going to talk about faith for. That's um, got to do more about how we walk out um, this life and um, faith. Um, how, how, do we, how do we walk it out? How do we practically walk in faith? And we're going to look at that. Right. So faith in. Right. So week one, we dealt with the, the subject of uh, we need a savior. Week two, we dealt with Jesus, who is Jesus? Week three, we've dealt with repentance and faith. I'd like to describe it like this. The subject is that it is the hands in which we grab a hold of the salvation that has been uh, given to us. So it's, it's, the, it's the lifeline which the Holy Spirit has revealed, which is Jesus. And faith are the hands which grab this lifeline. Uh, it is how we receive salvation. It's the hands which we receive salvation with. Right? We put our hope in Jesus and his saving grace and his power, um, the power of the resurrection. Um, that is what saves us. And that's how um, we come to um, salvation. But it's through faith. Ephesians 2 verse 8 says this, It is by grace that you have been saved through faith. Right? Now faith is the starting point of our walk with Jesus. It is how we receive Jesus into our hearts. Right? Um, Ephesians 3 verse 17 says that, so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. It is a manner that we receive Jesus into our hearts. And so I think the next logical question which we can ask over here is that, uh, why do we need faith to believe in God? And the, the point to this is to say that God is unseen. You see, we need faith to believe in God because God is unseen. Remember the two filters which we're seeing uh, these, these stories through is that these things hoped for and then these things unseen. And, you know, we put our hope in Jesus and uh, what he's done at the cross for us. Um, but we realize that God is unseen and that's why we need faith to believe in God. And God has revealed himself through nature, through creation, through miracles, and through uh, the person of Jesus Christ who is himself God. Right, the Bible puts it like this in John 1 verse 18. It says, None has seen God, 
but the one and only Son, talking about Jesus, who is himself God and is in closest relationship with the Father, and he has made him known. Right. Uh, 1 Peter 1 verse 8 to 9 says this, Though you have not seen him, you love him. Even though you do not see him now, you believe in him, and you are filled with the inexpressible joy and glorious joy for which you are receiving the end result of your faith. All right. And then John 20 verse 29 says, Blessed are those who have not seen and yet believed. And so that's why we need to exercise our faith and believing in God. Right. And the, the amazing thing, there's, there's scriptures in the Bible where uh, faith is talked about as if it can be measured. You know, Jesus talks to the disciples and he says that you have little faith. And a couple of times he says uh, to the disciples that they have little faith. And he talks about faith as small as a mustard seed. Uh, and the amazing thing is, is that even though our faith can fluctuate, so there's sometimes where we can have um, great amounts of faith and then there's moments where we don't have as much faith right? and the amazing thing about our faith in Jesus is that it is secure um, is that it is safe it is you know when we put our faith in Jesus whether our faith levels rise or whether they drop they are secure in him right? the Bible puts it like this it says that that uh, Jesus remains faithful right? um, it says in 2 Timothy 2 verse 13 is that even when we are faithless he remains faithful because he cannot be untrue to himself and so our hope in Jesus is secure um, putting our faith in Jesus it's a secure place to put it it's secure so whether our faith levels rise or drop we know that we can rest assured that our faith in Jesus is secure All right. uh, Hebrews 6 verse 19 says this uh, we have this as a sure and steadfast anchor for the soul, a hope that has entered into the innermost place behind the curtain where Jesus has gone as our forerunner, right, on our behalf, and it says there forever, and that is so, so beautiful. So now we've looked at um, faith in and how we uh, use faith to receive salvation, right, and also how we have used faith faith to um, believe in the unseen God, our, our God the Father, um, and how Jesus remains faithful. And so we can rest assured that our faith in God um, is secure and that it's not reliant on us, but reliant on him. And so now we like, I like to look at the second phase of faith, right, which is faith for, right? Um, now, there's the, the receiving of salvation, which is faith in and now faith for, but how we walk out um, this life um, in faith. And the beautiful thing about faith, um, what we need to understand is that faith needs action. Um, you find that the, this verse is very clearly saying, James 2, uh, that faith needs action. Uh, faith finds its understanding in living it out and not understanding it intellectually. So we can talk about faith, uh, but when we really find true understanding about living in faith, living by faith and not by sight, is when we actually put action to that. And that's when we come to a full understanding of it. Uh, and the amazing thing about exercising faith is that you don't need to have a theology degree. You don't need to be uh, have been saved for a number of years. Uh, you could be a newly uh, newborn Christian and you can exercise your faith. Um, and it's got nothing to do with your head knowledge, but your belief and your, tr your trust in God. All right, so uh, the Bible even encourages us, it says that we need to walk by faith and not by sight, meaning that uh, we need to walk by putting our hope in Jesus, putting our, our trust in Jesus. And how does this live out in practical day-to-day -day life? So um, sight, what we can see, what we can touch, what we can feel, um, that, th that is what we normally live out our lives around. But faith um, hopes for more. Faith uh, knows that is more. So faith uh, puts its, um, faith has its roots in the person of Jesus and his promises and what God has spoken of our lives. So um, examples of that is that, um, so our bank accounts might be low and 
you know, we, we know that we might not meet our, our needs by the end of the month, uh, but God says, you know, faith says, um, God takes care of all of my needs and God meets the, the needs of the birds in the sky. God dresses the lilies in the fields. Um, how much more does he provide for my needs? Right. Um, so it tells me that um, I, have, I don't have the ability to carry out what God has um, called me to, but faith uh, says that he has equipped me and given me everything that I need for life and godliness. Um, so faith allows us to live in a realm where the impossible happens. Um, faith is is not just is not just what we see around us, but is what we hope for. And in that, uh, when we put our hope in Christ and we stand on His promises, when we see it materialize, that is exercising our faith. Right? Faith unlocks a huge amounts of possibilities. Um, if you just look at those stories and. In Hebrews 11, um, of the, the forefathers of faith, can I call them, um, those who walked by faith and their examples, uh, you, you just see that their lives were drastically and um, infinitely changed for the better um, because they walked by faith. It uh, doesn't mean that their lives were, were easy, uh, it just means that they were able to live in uh, the unseen reality. So an example of that is Noah, building his boat. Meanwhile, there is no water around. There's nothing around. But yeah, he builds his boat in faith because God has told him. And he he holds to this promise that you know God is, has made to him. And he builds this boat. He, he acts out um, in faith. And the rains come and him and his family are safe in this boat. Why? Because um, he decided to act out in faith. All right. It wasn't easy at the time. I think of Abraham as well. Uh, the Bible says that he went to um, somewhere. This is what it literally says. It just says he left where he was and he left um, to somewhere where he did not know. And knowing that God had promised him an inheritance, uh, he exercised his faith and he said, I will step out, I will leave what I know and go into the unknown. And then that God blesses him and he lives in the promises that God has uh, had spoken over his life. Uh, un faith unlocks an incredible um, and extraordinary life and the Bible encourages, encourages us to walk by faith and not by sight. See, God would love us to walk in this, um, this life um, where we walk trusting Him, trusting in His promises, um, putting our hope in Him, putting our hope in His promises and walking that out, um, actioning those out in our day-to-day -day life. Um, and how that looks like for uh, each and every individual is, of course, there, there's some things which will remain the same because there's truths, but then there's things which God has spoken to us individually. And those things we need to be faithful in and carry those actions out. And we will see God unlock new possibilities for us that we never thought were possible. Um, and that's it for tonight. Uh, thanks for joining us. Uh, bless you.